please join in prayer for the sick and the homebound and those on our parish prayer list. Father of goodness and love, hear our prayers for the sick members of our community and for all who are in need. Amid mental and physical suffering, may they find consolation in your healing presence. Show your mercy as you close wounds, cure illnesses, make broken bodies whole, and free downcast spirits. May these special people find lasting health and deliverance, and so join us in thanking you for all your gifts. We ask this through the Lord Jesus, who healed all who believe. Amen. The entrance antiphon. Let us Let rejoice and be glad and give, and give glory, glory to God, God for the Lord, Lord our God. And Almighty reigns. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today uh, we pray especially for. This is Jose and Virginia Monteiro, and this is Kate Kulczyk. At the beginning of this Holy Eucharist, let us acknowledge our sins. Let us ask for forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant Almighty and merciful God that we may in truth receive a share in the resurrection of Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. <clears throat> the crowd in Philippi joined in the attack on Paul and Silas, and the magistrates had them stripped and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After inflicting many blows on them, they threw them into prison and instructed the jailer to guard them securely. When he received these instructions, he put them in the inmost cell and secured their feet to a stake. About midnight, while Paul and Silas were praying and singing him to God as the prisoners listened, there was suddenly such a severe earthquake that the foundation of the jail shook. All the doors flew open, and the chains of all were pulled loose. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, thinking that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted out in a loud voice, do no harm to yourself, we are all here. He asked for a light and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you and your household will be saved. So they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to everyone in his house. He took them in at that hour of the night and bathed their wounds. Then he and all his family were baptized at once. 
He brought them up to his house and provided a meal with his household. And with his household, he rejoiced at having come to faith in God. The word of the Lord. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Because of your kindness and your truth, you have made great above all things your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Your Your right right hand hand saves me, O Lord. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Send to you the spirit of truth, says the Lord. He will guide you to all truth. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Now I am going to the one who sent me, and not one of you ask me, Where are you going? But because I told you this, grief has filled your hearts. But I tell you the truth, it is better for you that I go. For if I do not go, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, He will convict the world in regard to sin and righteousness and condemnation. Sin because they do not believe in me. Righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will no longer see me. Condemnation because the ruler of this world has been one condemned, has been condemned. The gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Deacon. The disciples were bewildered and grief-stricken men. All they knew was that they were going to lose Jesus. But he told them in the end that this was all for the best, because when he went away, the Holy Spirit, the Helper, would come. When he was in body, in his own body, he could not be everywhere with them. It was always a case of greetings and farewells. When he was in the body, he could not reach the minds and hearts and consciousness of men and women everywhere. He was confined by the limitations of place and time. But there are no limitations in the spirit. Everywhere we go, the spirit is with us. The coming of the spirit would be the fulfillment of the promise. I am with you always to the end of the age. The Spirit would bring to men and women an uninterrupted fellowship forever and would bring to those who preach the word of God a power and an effectiveness no matter where they preached. Now, let us go and see what Jesus says that the Holy Spirit will do. The Holy Spirit will convict people of sin. When the Jews crucified Jesus, they did not believe that they were sinning. They believed that they were serving God. But when the story of the crucifixion was later preached, 
They were, they, were, uh, they were cut to the heart. They suddenly had the terrible conviction that the crucifixion was the greatest crime in the history and that their sin had caused it. Was it that, the, that which gives people a sense of sin? Was it that which makes people humble before the cross? Why should the sight of a man crucified as a criminal in Israel 2,000 years ago tear open the hearts of people throughout the centuries and still does today? It is the work of the Holy Spirit. Second, the Holy Spirit will con convince people of the righteousness of Christ. It becomes clear that this means when we see that it is Christ's righteousness of which they will be convinced. Jesus was crucified as a criminal. He was tried. He was found guilty. He was regarded by the Jews as an evil heretic and by the Romans as a dangerous character. He was given the punishment that the worst criminals had to suffer, branded as a felon and an enemy of God. What changed that? What made people see in this crucified figure the Son of God, as the centurion saw at the cross, and Paul on the road to Damascus? It is amazing that men and women should put their trust for all eternity in a crucified Jewish criminal. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit who convinces people of the sheer righteousness of Christ, backed by the fact that Jesus rose again and went to his Father. Third, the Holy Spirit convinces people of the judgment to come. On the cross, evil stands condemned and defeated. What makes us feel certain that judgment lies ahead? It is the work of the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit who gives us the inner and unshakable conviction that we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God. And fourth, there remains one thing which is at the moment John does not go on to mention in today's gospel. When we are convicted of our own sin, when we are convinced of Jesus Christ's righteousness, and when we are convinced of the judgment to come, what gives us the certainty that in the cross of Christ is our salvation, and that with Christ we are forgiven and saved from judgment. This too is the work of the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit who convinces us and makes us sure that in this crucified figure, we can find our Savior and our Lord. The Holy Spirit convicts us of our sin and convinces us of our Savior. In less than two weeks, we will celebrate the solemnity of the Pentecost. This is the annual celebration of the fulfillment of this promise of Jesus. On that day, we commemorate the fact that the Holy Spirit has come and that we are now in the time of the Holy Spirit. So today, reflect over the next, and over the next couple of weeks, reflect on the Holy Spirit. Humbly admit to yourself if you need to let the Holy Spirit become more alive in your life. Trust that Jesus wants you to receive him in his fullness. And be not afraid to let the union take place. Amen. With trust in God's faithfulness, we place these prayers before him. For the church and her leaders, may the Holy Spirit continue to grant them courage in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with the world. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For world leaders, may Christ, who unites all to him, Help them lead with justice and mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, may the healing hand of Christ provide peace and consolation, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For this community here at St. Mark's, may the joy of the gospel be a source of light and life 
In our daily endeavors, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world, for peace in Ukraine during this very troubled time, and for an end to all persecution, violence, and aggression, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our loved ones who have died, May the mercy of God bring them to everlasting life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers and intentions that we place in our prayer book, and for all the prayers and intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Merciful Father, we thank you for listening to our prayers, which we offer through your Son, Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us a bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual dream. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may be accepted by you, Lord, my sacrifice in your sight, this day be pleasing to you, O God. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our, our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to love you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is a ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us so we pray that with the blessed virgin mary mother of god with blessed joseph her spouse with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy May the body and blood of Christ give us a good Communion enters on. That Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead and so enter into his glory. Alleluia. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear Christian ministers, please come forward. You are sent from this assembly to bring the word of God and the bread of life to the sick and humbled members of our parish family. Go with our love, our care, and our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and gentle healer. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord, peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name, with you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts, teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path. No partiality influence our actions, our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All those we ask of you are at work in every place and time in the communion of the Father and the Son forever and ever. O salutari sostia, peceli pani sostium, bella premun hostilia, darabur fer Sempre 